Hello, Dr. Tony, Dr. Tony Coaches. Glad you're all here with me today. I want to talk today about the comfort zone. This morning I woke up after a nice family Friday of just rex and relaxation. It was a rainy day. It was raining all day. So we just stayed inside and played together. Although sometimes I do like to go for walks in the rain. We didn't do that yesterday. We learned how to make um, homemade crepes, which was fun and delicious. And we played games together. We just acted silly together. We watched a couple movies together. And these kinds of days are so nice. They're so nice. But they're also the kind of days that I definitely didn't make room for in my schedule or in my life the way I do now. Back when I was in burnout and just constantly hustling and overworking and overextending myself and feeling like I needed to prove myself. Like these days, like I had the other day, they weren't really a part of my everyday life. And what I find is that these kind of days being embedded in people's lives is not happening for most action takers, most leaders, most impact makers. So when I woke up this morning, this was on my mind. And it brought me to contemplate the desire to enjoy the comfort in our lives. Most of us want a certain thing or experience because ultimately we believe that in the having of it, we're going to feel better, right? Like we use this frame of mind to then justify pushing ourselves, hustling, sacrificing along the way because, well, one day it's going to pay off. One day it'll be better. One day it'll be worth it, right? And I get it. Action is required for movement, for progress to happen, right? But a key lesson that I've learned over the past several years is that rest and relaxation, regular rejuvenation, energizing time for you to do what you enjoy, this is integral. It is vital. It is crucial. It is critical. It is an essential part of life experience as well. If you're truly wanting to thrive in life and enjoy, enhance your quality of life. All right, so pushing ourselves to take on too much and live in this constant state, this chronic action state, actually leaves us feeling stuck and, and, and amped up in a way that doesn't feel good, right? Sometimes we even can find ourselves fairly comfortable with where we're at. And then want to stay there because the comfort feels good or it just feels normal. And you might catch yourself saying, if you're in this kind of comfort zone place, you might catch yourself saying something to yourself like, well, how can I want more? Like I have everything I need or, well, doesn't it just make me selfish to want more when other people don't have what I have? Or isn't this just good enough? Or this is as good as it's going to get. Or, well, I would be ungrateful if I wanted any more. I'm comfortable. But comfortable keeps you where you're at because it feels safe or normal and stuck keeps you where you're at because it's familiar right both this comfort zone and this stuckness both keep you playing small they can keep you feeling held captive and therefore prevent this sense of expansion they restrict growth. And ultimately, this leads most people to feel over time some variation of complacency or stagnant or overly stressed or unfulfilled. And perhaps you can relate because a lot of people can. I know sometimes I, I want to stay in that comfortable for a little while. The comfort zone feels good. And honestly, if you've put in work to create that comfort zone for yourself, absolutely, you deserve to enjoy it, right? And I know other times I'll get stuck for a bit. That's normal and it's human, right? But I also now know that it's my choice to stay in that stuckness or to stay in that comfort zone indefinitely. I don't have to be held captive by either one of them, whichever one I may be in at the time. And neither do you. And you don't need to make them bad or wrong. But you also don't need to make them your entire life experience. Right? Like you can choose to step out of the familiarity. You can choose to step into the discomfort, into the unknown. And man, do I know that this is scary. I know the unknown can feel all kinds of scary. Right? 
it can feel all kinds of, of scary, risky to make a big decision or take a risk when there's uncertainty about what exactly is going to happen, about that unfamiliar, right? Action takers, leaders, people like you, like me, we tend to really enjoy feeling in control and really hate feeling out of control. Are you with me on that? That's why fears pop up though. Fears pop up and keep us in the stuckness or convince us to stay in the comfort zone because the unknown, the unfamiliar, the uncomfortable leaves us feeling out of control a lot of the time. When I left my W-2 jobs, for example, and chose to go out solely on my own with my private practice as a clinician and uh, for my coaching business um, as a life and wellness coach, I chose to step into entrepreneurship. That wasn't actually my lifelong plan or anything like that, but I felt a lot about making this decision. It was a big decision. It was a big shift for me, for my family, for my businesses, for, I mean, for my work. And so I felt excited. I felt called and inspired. I felt confident that this path that I was moving on was going to lead me to an even, deep, even a deeper sense of, of fulfillment and a greater impact, right? Larger opportunities for me to make a deeper impact, which is what I wanted to do, both for myself and for others, for those I serve and for my family. Deep down, however, I also felt scared. And I tried to ignore that fear, but it popped up anyway. The more I ignored it, the more it was able to sneak in and like snake its way into the cracks and grab the steering wheel. And so I'd find myself planning and replanning vigorously in unnecessary ways. I'd be working behind the scenes of my businesses without taking action to increase my visibility, which no one can do anything about your business or be a, a, a partner for your business or purchase anything that you're offering if you're not visible, right? And so without visibility as a business, I couldn't grow. So it wasn't helpful that I wasn't boosting my visibility in that way. I'd stay quiet about my endeavors for fear that people would judge me or judge my dreams. I experienced imposter syndrome, which led me down this kind of shiny object pathway, investing and taking in mass amounts of information, which <laughs> that focus, it, it threw me off, right? I just, I had a focus on trying to learn it all and execute it all perfectly, which only left me working harder and harder behind the scenes, spinning my wheels instead of taking the leaps that I needed to, to help my businesses grow so that I could impact people's lives even more deeply, which is why I chose to step out into the entrepreneurial world in the first place. So I wasn't even working towards what I truly wanted to work towards in the way that I could do it most effectively. I told myself that I needed to learn more and I needed to do more, even though I had already learned enough to execute what I needed to. And even though I already knew that I would need to take imperfect action if I were to truly step into this decision to expand, both personally and professionally. Have you ever found yourself spinning your wheels, taking in maybe a bunch of information, trying to get it done perfectly, pushing yourself to do more and more? only to feel like you're exhausted and kind of stuck in the muck of it all. That's because fear's taken the steering wheel. Fear has snuck its way in, creeped its way in, and it's taken, it's grabbing hold of the steering wheel. And whether we know it or not, fears creep in and they affect how we function. Anytime you want to up level or you want to change, you want to shift your lifestyle, you want to step outside of your comfort zone or you get stuck, Fears will and do arise. That cannot be avoided. Fear, love, both are part of the human existence, right? We can't avoid feeling them, no matter how hard we try. The question is, will you give the fear the steering wheel? Or will you acknowledge the fears for what they are and take your steering wheel back? Because the truth is that you can't do something about what you're not aware of. And so if you've been ignoring your feelings and your fears like I tried two years ago, then they're likely playing a bigger part than you realize in the decisions you're making and the experiences that you're having. You're going to have to choose to become aware of those fears that have been playing in the, black, in the background and then actively choose what step to take 
from there. If you know that you want to dive deeper here and you want some guidance with that process, I welcome you to connect with me. Let me know. I'd be happy to discuss if I can support you, if we're a good fit for working together. Either way, if you've been feeling stuck or comfort zoned and wanting more, ask yourself, do you know what fears you're having? Do you know what your fears are? And are you open to see them so that you can take your steering wheel back? And begin to get unstuck and step outside that comfort zone so you can expand even more. The choice is yours. Thanks for joining me today. Dr. Tony, Dr. Tony Coaches. You can email me at hello at Dr. Dr. Tony, T-O-N-I Coaches, C-O-A-C-H-E-S dot com or click any of the provided links and we can connect that way.